We're now by, joined by Coach Bob Huggins in West Virginia. Coach is going to go straight to questions, so we'll take questions from the floor. Caught him off guard here, Coach. Blair will ask you a first question. Hey, Bob. Blair Kirkhoff of the Kansas City Star. How are you, Blair? I'm doing well. I hope, you are, hope you are, too. As good as can be expected. Oh, good. good. Um, with your pressure, uh, pressure style of basketball, do you now recruit to that, or do you recruit as you always did and, you know, teach it and drill it when they, when they get there? Um, well, obviously we'd like to get people who we think could develop into somebody very good in that, but we're just trying to get the best guys we can get. And we've recruited, I think, uh, the last class and this class, I think we've recruited guys who will end up being pretty good at it. Uh, but we've got a couple pretty good players, and it, it, it's kind of interesting. I did it at Cincinnati when I first got there. I get to Cincinnati and I start looking at film and I see Louisville and what Coach Crum had down there and he had like five first round picks. And I'm like, I'm never gonna get guys that good. So maybe we can get 15 guys better than their 15. And then I got Danny Fordson and Danny wasn't real good at pressing, but he could really score the ball. So I'm like, why do I have Danny out there running around fouling people when I ought to have him down there fouling everybody else out. So we quit doing it. And then we've just recently gotten back to it. So to answer your question, I have no idea. <laughs> Outside right. Uh, Sam Mallinger with the Kansas City Star. Um, Bob, you guys are picked second, obviously, in the, in the preseason. I don't know how much attention you pay to this kind of thing, but there's – a perception sometimes that the um, you know Kansas's dominance in this league has been bad for bad for the league's image over the years. Do, do you agree with that? And how important is it for for somebody else to to kind of knock them off? Well, to answer the first part of your question, all those guys lied. <laughs> they lied. They there isn't one of those guys don't think they're going to beat us. So why would they vote for a second if they think they're they're going to beat us? So I don't I don't believe them. Um, Kansas, Kansas dominance is is, is really, it, it comes down to three things. They've got a great coach, they've got great players, and they never lose at home. Until we start beating them at home, and we had chances. We had chances, and we missed free throws, and, you know, a lot, a lot of crazy things happen in Allen Fieldhouse now, you know, and, and so we end up losing, and if we had beaten them, I think somebody else would have had a chance to maybe tie for the league championship or, or, or whatever. But some, we got to beat them at home. People have to go into Allen Fieldhouse and win once in a while. Because the rest of us all lose at home. And I think if you look at it, that's, that's without a question a difference. And that has a lot to do with the job that Bill does. Bill does a great job. And they have, they have really good players. But I don't know why that would taint anything. You, you know what I'm saying? Because they've been one of the top three or four teams in the country for how many years? And, and it's not going to change. They could be in whatever league you want to put them in. They're still going to be. Don't listen to those people. Question on the right. Kevin Haskins. Wait, wait just a second, Kevin. Go ahead. Kevin Haskins to me, Captain Durham. Bob, what did you see in Brad Underwood when he coached for you and, and – hired him, and, and also, how do you think he'll do at Oklahoma State? Well, I, I knew Brad for a long, long time. Um, Brad was a young guy and was coaching at Dodge City Community College, and I went out to recruit one of his guys, and we kind of hit it off, and I kind of enjoyed talking to Brad, I, you know, and so we, we stayed in touch over the years, over, you know, the various places that he had been, and I've got a condo in uh, New Smyrna Beach, and of course Brad was at Daytona. So we got together, and, and uh, I don't know where we were, somewhere around there. I don't know what little town it was, but anyway. So yeah, you know, we're we're sitting talking, and um, 
for me to hire Brad was a no-brainer because Brad was a K-Stater, which was really important. He's a Kansas native, which was really important. And I needed somebody on the staff, you know, to be able to kind of link the past with the, pre with the present. And, and certainly he did that. You want me to give you a great Brad Underwood story? So Brad, Brad was my ops guy, and, and uh, so he really couldn't coach. So he uh, somewhere found this old, I mean old bike now. Did one of those ones where, the, you know, the deal goes and you're, you're pedaling and it was squeaking and carrying on. And he put it right on the edge of the court. And then he had an elliptical at the other end. So whichever end we were practicing on, Brad was either riding a bike or doing the elliptical. And a compliance people would come down and said, Coach, you can't have Brad on the floor coaching. I said, he's not on the floor coaching. He said, well, no, he's on that bike coaching. I can't help what he says, but he's not coaching. He's not on the floor. He was right off the floor now. But that was Brad's idea of helping. You know, he'd get on that bike and get on that elliptical. Actually, he probably ought to do that now. Um, <laughs> I can't talk, Blair. We got a question in the middle front. Coach Darren, Darren Smith from KLKC Radio. Uh, you have uh, a lot of freshmen coming in. What kind of impact do you think they'll help uh, help with the team that's senior late? We're going to play a lot of people, so they're going to play. Uh, our two bigs are going to play. We have a 6'10 freshman and a whatever he is, 6'7", 6'8 freshman. They're going to play. I just I, – I, I hope – that we can get into other people's bench and play and make them play guys that they haven't played a lot and just a cumulative effect of what we do wears on them. But we did we did an interesting thing. Uh, Jawan Staten played almost 39 minutes a game as a junior. And then we changed, we changed style and started playing faster and pressing and all that. And he was playing 28 minutes a game. I think the people in his circle felt like he wasn't playing enough. And so we went back and chartered possessions, and he actually played more possessions playing 28 minutes the way we play now than he did when we were playing another way, and he played 39 minutes a game. So we're going to create a lot of different, a lot of possessions. And that's really what I look at. I, when we first started doing it, I went and I looked at the stat sheet and it said they shot 57%. And I'm like, you know, I can't say what I said. <laughs> but I'm looking at that like, and, but then I look at the number of possessions, the number of possessions we had, the number of turnovers, our possessions compared to their possessions, our shots compared to their shots. It's worth it. One final question. You're in the middle. Just say, get it. I'm just warming up. <laughs> Coach, uh, when I was in college, I followed you while you were in Cincinnati. Are you still, in your opinion, able to uh, recruit the type of talent that you got when you were in Cincinnati that, you, that you're getting at uh, West Virginia? Do you, think, do you still believe you're getting the type of uh, same superstar type athletes that you were getting there? No. It, it, it's a different recruiting base. I mean, we're in a state of 1.5 million people. There were 1.8 million people in Cincinnati alone. And, and Ohio is a state of a whole bunch of cities. So there's going to be a whole lot more players. We've tried to recruit everybody from our state that could play. And, and we have, we've got two guys on our team now, well, three actually. We got a walk on. A guy walked on, he's seven foot tall from Cameron, West Virginia, 300 people. I said, what are you all doing, Cameron, for fun? He said, Coach, our idea of going to the mall is going to the general dollar. <laughs> um, but Nate Adrian's had a really, really good career for us and, and is playing terrific right now from right there in Morgantown. And Chase Holler from Wheeling. But other than that, I mean, we just, we, we, don't, we don't get guys from our state, which makes it so much harder. You know, and you talk about Really, a lot of the guys that I had, they were, they were Ohio natives, or they had ties. You know, they had relatives. They had ties in Ohio. Kenny Satterfield's father lived in Toledo. You know, 
of people didn't know that, but he had Ohio ties. But we recruited him out of New York, but he had Ohio ties. So it's, you know, it's just a whole lot different. We're going to take one more question here on the front. Blair? <clears throat> just since you're just warming up. Well, I stood back there for about 45 minutes waiting on you, so I figured, what the hell, if I go a few minutes over, what does it matter, you know? Okay. <laughs> hey, Bob, how did, how did the state went through that devastating flooding in, in, in the summer? How did the state get through that, and what was the role of the university through that? Well, Blair, it's been, it's been hard. I mean, it, it, it did, to say anything other than that would be a lie. I mean, we've... They're shutting, they've, they've, they've shut mines down left and right. People are out of work. Um, Southern West Virginia has taken a, a huge hit. Now, you know, Northern West Virginia is doing pretty good, but Southern West Virginia has taken a huge hit. And then, and then the flood came and, 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 you know, it's hard. I mean, what do you do? I mean, we had, we, Milan Pharmaceuticals gave a million dollars. A million dollars don't, I mean, this is a million dollars a lot of money. I mean, we all, would agree. I think a million dollars is a lot of money, but it's not. It doesn't even touch the devastation that happened. And then you go to a deal. You know, I, I'm I'm running around trying to think. I'm thinking, okay, you know, well, let's we'll we'll build somebody a house. Who do you pick? The guy. Who's the person? You know. So you go in a town of 500 people and you build one guy a house, and there's 499 people not very happy with you. You know. Why, why, why was it him? Why wasn't it me? You know, it's, it's, it's harder to fix than what anybody realizes until you really get involved and really try to help fix it. And, and it's just the devastation at the Greenbrier. I mean, Jim's going to spend, I mean, literally hundreds of millions of dollars to fix that. And it, it's just, it's, it's a, we've been hit as hard as any state's maybe ever been hit with when you combine the loss of jobs because of the mining industry and, and the flood, it's hard. I mean, it's just, and, and the great thing is about the people in the state of West Virginia is they love West Virginia. They just absolutely love West Virginia and they love West Virginia University. And, and you know, I had a question about Cincinnati, but you know, we don't have the Bengals, and we don't have the Reds, and we don't have the Indians, and we don't have the Cavaliers or the Browns. We have West Virginia University. And so every kid grows up wearing a hat that says a WV on it, or they wear a shirt, or they wear a pair of pants, or whatever that has a WV on it. And whether they go to the university or not, they're West Virginia fans. And it's, so we've had West Virginia fans throughout the country because if you grow up there, you're a West Virginia fan. You listen to it on the radio, you watch it on TV. I grew up sitting in my grandfather's lap listening to the Mountaineers. Uh, so, I mean, I, I, I understand. I grew up in Doug Hill. You know? it's, uh, it's, it's just a way of life. And, and they're proud, proud people. Proud people. But it's hard. I mean, it's been really hard, and and we've had so many people forced to leave the state just to, just to find work because of what's happened with the mining industry. So it's uh, I, I forget what your question was, but <laughs> you answered it. <laughs> did I? Yeah. I usually do. I get around to it, you know. <laughs> uh, but but anyways, I, I just that's why I'm, that's why that's why I try to uh, have our guys understand what they represent. Senator Manchin, uh, way more eloquently than what I can do, said to him one time, he said, you know, once you put that uniform on and you have that West Virginia across your chest and you run out there, you know, people talk about representing your team and your family. He said, it's way more than that here. You're representing your team, your family, your university an entire state and that's a hell of a responsibility when you think about it and I and I try to I try to just you know pound that in our guys heads all the time that, that man you're re you're representing 1.5 million people you're just not representing yourself anymore
that's the neat thing about it. It is, it is, it's a, it's a, it doesn't happen a lot of places. Okay, Coach, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Yes, Have sir. Have a great season. Thank you.